opinion of one uh, social phenomena that is prevalent today, especially in the fringe media and fringe intellectual sphere mediated by internet. Although this phenomena is abroad for much longer time, at the latest from uh, the mid to late 60s of previous century, and is uh, in a very, uh, 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 I think, historically accurate terms to be located in the West, further West, or what I, with René Guénon, would call Far West, that is America and Western to North, Northwestern Europe. Uh, I don't have a proper term or a proper label to pin upon this phenomena at this moment. So I'll use uh, the self-identifier uh, uh, applied to it by people who consider it to be uh, the way to go, the good thing. And this is anti-imperialism. Anti anti-imperialism can be is usually considered to be a leftist thing but uh, we uh, we are witnessing uh, to a rise in completely self-contradictory ultra right anti imperialism which is a very very good uh, optical tool let's call it intellectual microscope to uh, uh, isolate and uh, describe the etiology of anti-imperialism because contradictions brought about by far-right anti-imperialism uh, perfectly serve to show and demonstrate that anti-imperialism can very well uh, lose its prefix anti that is, that anti-imperialism could very well be imperialism itself, under the other guise. And this is the theme of this podcast. This will not be a deep analysis, of course. Uh, deep analysis goes into writing. And, but I think few, uh, few opinions I can throw in here will give some food for thought. Uh, well, uh, for starters, I will uh, point out one personal uh, uh, personal experience, let's call it that, and I hope it will not be understood as a kind of uh, ego-tripping or personal quibble with somebody. I just want to inter in, uh, illustrate uh, what I think at the outset. Uh, by something very concrete, so I'll give uh, give an example from my own experience, from being attacked by one quote-unquote anti-imperialist or leftist. Uh, namely, uh, some months ago, as those who follow Kali Tribune know, I stumbled upon uh, an attempt to explain the war in Yugoslavia, our breakup of Yugoslavia, uh, by a certain British author, and this uh, video, or that is, I'm sorry, this audio podcast of his that was supposedly been in the works for a long time and that is supposedly very detailed, as this person like to likes to advertise what he is doing, was just about the worst take on war in Yugoslavia I ever encountered in the great competition because Yugoslavia is one of the cornerstones of postmodern anti-imperialism that is Yugoslavia is a histo war in Yugoslavia or to be more precise war in the aftermath of uh, dissolution of Yugoslavia uh, is taken by a plethora of both radical left and radical right uh, opinion makers, activists and so on as a kind of training ground for devising their quote-unquote narrative on the world situation narrative that is completely Manichean uh, 
uh, clash of the good versus evil that is NATO versus and USA versus the quote unquote rest. What is very interesting to note at the beginning is, is this West and the rest is in fact uh, Samuel Huntington's uh, uh, Samuel Huntington's idea, this Manichaean clash of civilizations. And it is very noteworthy to see that a whole plethora of radical left activists and opinion makers are accepting this. Only they are identifying themselves not with the West, although they are safely tucked in the prosperous West, but they identify with the rest. And this uh, guy who made this podcast uh, fit the mold perfectly. And I made a, a rather short, if I remember correctly, rather short uh, uh, audio podcast uh, to, to refute what he said. And I did it in a rather offhand manner, but sufficiently, uh, sufficiently argued to practically uh, to put him in position that he has nothing to say. If I went into details, he would fair much much worse uh, and uh, be that as it may i try to not to 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 divulge, divulge his identity but it was impossible because i'm sorry it was a there was a video segment and everybody could see that it was his site and so on so day after he responded to my take and his response was with comments on my methods of exposition as rambling or something, he commented that I am not fit to lick his boots. Now, I am really not putting this out to uh, make a personal quibble out of this, because by saying this, by, by making this comment, this individual have proven himself with no help of mine to be a total clown. I mean, uh, this kind of comment uh, is something that just don't, doesn't need a further demolition because it demolishes the one who put it, who had put it forward. What is interesting about it was my impression. And this impression discloses the angle from which I'm looking at these things. And this is the angle of the rest not of the West, because uh, as ma many of us, and I believe many of you listening to me now, are not parts of the West proper, of this far powerful wi uh, far West. We are not all of us uh, the East proper, but we are somewhere in between. I am from in Eastern Europe. My impression was the image of the red coat or colonial officer talking to a Kali, or to a black, or to American Indian. This is, this is expression of militaristic imperialism. And this is my point. And I, this is why I bring this up as a good introduction. Uh, the phrases as equality, social justice, uh, good for all, common good, socialism, can be employed by everybody and they can be employed by people who are psychologically, intellectually and uh, by their station in life, complete oppressive imperialist, oppressive by their own uh, mental capacity. And this guy proved to be just that in this simple comment. Because how can I, resident of the ex-Yugoslavia, be so bold and attempt to criticize what he, from the fair Albion, has to say about this? And what he had to say about it was a complete rubbish. It was even beneath uh, the level... Uh, of uh, usual uh, Yugoslavia revisionism you can find on uh, global research, you can find uh, 
uh, with this Milosevic, uh, what are essentially Mil Milosevic, Sloboda Milosevic apologists on the left and on the right, because they frequently cooperate on the, especially on Russian media platforms or pro-Russian, at least pro-Russian media platforms. <clears throat> now, how can imperialism, anti-imperialism be imperialism? As I said, I don't like this word. Uh, I, I think uh, that it is too strong, uh, that, that we are not talking about empires here. We are talking about authoritarianism. We are talking about, let's say, anti-authoritarian authoritarians. What those people do, and what is essentially uh, their task in life, the task they undertook, is to deny the free will to anyone who is not part of their uh, prosperous, powerful part of the world. In a, to be more concrete, USA, Canada, Britain, perhaps Germany, but mostly Anglo, uh, uh, powerful Anglo-Saxon uh, block of countries. The way they do this is mind-boggling at first sight, but not so much when you go into it. Namely, they are doing this by championing the cause of the rest, that is, of the countries as, which is now <laughs> extremely popular, uh, North Korea, Democratic Republic thereof, that is, countries like uh, uh, Haiti or ex-Yugoslav countries, uh, mostly Serbia, because Serbia uh, took a few uh, missiles from NATO, which makes it a uh, martyr for the cause. Uh, and they, of course, forget uh, the, um, the thousands of missiles, uh, thousands of shells that hit Sarajevo for three years from the courtesy of Serbia uh, and so on. But this is not the theme right now. Uh, the problem is that these people uh, present something that at first sight seems like a Westerner's self-loathing. That is, they see the West, or if they want to be more precise, America, if they are geopolitically minded, that is, unminded, it is America or NATO or uh, both things together to be absolute evil. Everybody who is against this behemoth, that is Leviathan if we want to be geopolitically accurate in Duginist terms, is good. And of course they will tell you that of course Saddam, Slobodan, uh, Kim Jong-il uh, and the others are no saints but three points. And then they try to demonstrate that they have a right to self-determination and blah, 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 blah. But very soon, uh, in my experience, uh, those uh, qualifications and uh, those poses... Uh, come to be abandoned and they become vocal advocates of the, some of the worst regimes uh, in existence now. This kind of thinking is not a self-loathing. In my opinion, there is no self-loathing in it. Because uh, one thing that is common to these people is absolutely inflated ego. And only, because only inflated ego can uh, delude itself into, uh, or into a standpoint that it can really decipher the world history. That it can say with very simplistic terms what is good and what is bad. And make this divide between good and bad absolute. Anybody with less of an ego will tell you that America is not absolute evil, that West is not absolute evil. 
for the simple reason that there is no absolute evil in the world. This is abs idea of absolute evil, unconditional evil, unredeemable evil. is a theological, metaphysical idea. It has nothing to do with history. We can talk about influence of absolute evil in history, but not in historical players as being absolute evil. This is impossible. And this is what they do. And now for the reason why I think that there, there is no self-loathing into this. First, inflated ego does not loathe itself. That's the first thing. And as you see from the example of my would-be uh, intellectual opponent who torpedoed himself and disclosed what kind of uh, psychology he is in possession, uh, this is uh, uh, obviously a um, standpoint of power. The idea of knowledge as power and the need to overpower the unpredictable, incomprehensible world. They need to put us all into boxes, or better to say, put the labels on us. Labels that uh, will make the world uh, make sense for them. And those labels are extremely simplistic. So, for instance, uh, uh, everything uh, which is against USA is good. Everything that is for USA or has any relation with USA in the sense that in, in, in the sense of, of military alliances and so on is absolutely evil. Uh, the reason why this idiocy cuts uh, between left and right is uh, because it is completely fundamentalist. It can be, uh, uh, and it is uh, completely, un, uh, uh, completely detached from reality, especially historical reality. And so this empty schemata of uh, good, absolute good and bad can be turned around very easily. And you have a good example of this is Alexander Dugin, uh, who is so, uh, hmm, so radical that uh, uh, he can serve as an optics to, 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 to recognize uh, this kind of thinking in other people that model it better than him, that, kinda, uh, that are not so vocal and not so outspoken like him, especially when he speaks and writes in Russian. Uh, and this is a completely empty schemata. And the need of inflated ego is to take this schemata and uh, fit the world into it. And ego is not a moral value. Ego, in my opinion, in this sense, is not even so much a psychological as an ontological, anthropological determination. Uh, when people are using, instead of using their mind, applying their mind, they are applying the ego as a principle, uh, as a principle uh, of putting oneself into the center of the world. And out of this, interpreting everything, and then this interpreting will not be thinking. It will be projecting, because this is what ego does. It projects his image because it has a sore need to make itself real because it is most unreal thing uh, existent uh, in this world. And then you have these cartoonish interpretations. I always return to war in Yugoslavia because you have a, a fairly recent historical event that is unbelievably well documented. Uh, where actors in the conflict were very vocal about what they want, where prehistory of this conflict is very, very clear for everybody to see, especially the immediate prehistory pre from 1987 to, uh, to the March of 1991. Uh, you have this uh, ascent of Slobodan Milosevic, and you have 
all of his speeches, uh, his discussions with his uh, associates like Boris Savjovic, you have autobiographies of people like Jovic and so on and so forth. You have the movement of the armies, you have the army, that is because there was only one army at the beginning and it was in Serbian hands, and so on and so forth. And you have a timeline and you have the uh, very clear standpoints from Western politicians and military men and diplomats, especially Americans who were supporters by word, deed of, and omission of Milosevic, uh, all the way until the public out outcry was such that they were pressed into changing their policy and the policy was preservation of Yugoslavia, which, as they very well knew, uh, meant war because preservation of Yugoslavia was a trick uh, that Milosevic used to to uh, grab huge chunks of Croatia, the whole of Bosnia and so on and, and incorporate it into greater Serbia uh, when uh, idea that he could have Yugos Serbian, completely Serbian dominated Yugoslavia failed uh, this is not a very complicated story. Uh, I will go into it uh, at another time because I want to talk and write about this with the greatest possible amount of facts being put forward in the forms of documents, quotation and so on. And I cannot do it in this podcast form. I'm just giving an illustration here. And w then you see this ego quote-unquote anti-imperialistic ego at work because they deny this factuality that is completely obvious. This is not something that was... This was... Uh, this started 30 years ago. And there is a prehistory even to that, prehistory that goes on to 19th century, but you don't really need it to understand. You have to have a timeline. And for instance, this English idiot even couldn't get the timeline right. He, he doesn't know when the war started. For him, the war started with the supposed influx of Mujahedin in Bosnia. Mujahedin that were really, pretty much a negligible force in the war. Because he wants to make a narrative that Yugoslavia was broken up by NATO. Yugoslavia was very much supported, this, uh, this unity of Yugoslavia was supported by the West. And this is something that, uh, that really uh, almost needs no proof if you know anything about recent European history. And it is very burdensome to repeat uh, the very uh, uh, accessible facts to these people, but they never change their mind. And they, this is something I saw in a few debates some authors have, like Marco Hoare, who is, although I, I don't subscribe to this, his political opinions now, that man is uh, one of the foremost experts on Bosnia and uh, especially Srebrenica massacre. And when you see his debates with, uh, with some of those... Uh, Yugoslavia revisionists, you see that they don't, uh, they just don't, uh, uh, they, they just don't alter their, uh, their standpoints, no matter what you tell them, no matter how well you demonstrate that they are wrong. And this is uh, more than being ideologically deluded, in my opinion. I think this means uh, precisely this inflated ego. And this inflated ego can sell itself as a leftist, animal-loving, uh, social justice, uh, tolerance, but in its essence, it's a power-hungry uh, attempt to project one's own image onto the world. Because I really can't, uh, there is no other way to explain how such a nice person can invite you to lick his boots. When such person, uh, those are moments when somebody uh, lets this subconscious uh, drives that in fact uh, move him and for him uh, through life, in no matter what guys, uh, when they come to the fore, because this is the drive of the imperial British officer. <laughs>
<laughs> it's well, believe me, from the standpoint of uh, of a man who is the member of the people that are usually at the receiving end of imperialism, this is the thing you recognize unmistakably. But sometimes it's hard to provoke uh, the, to provoke the man to show himself. You have to uh, you have to scratch him a bit. Uh, th this time around, it was not intentional on my part, but it bore fruit. <laughs> uh, and so uh, I see now the, the popularity on the side of North Korea is so ridiculous, uh, ridiculous, uh, uh, quote unquote, journalist uh, <laughs> reports from North Korea taken from tourist, what is a tourist trip, uh, guided tourist tour uh, through North Korea. Now, uh, this is North Korea uh, as it is, supposedly. And the assumption in this is that everybody in the West is buying a cartoonish image of North Korea mediated by Western mainstream media. Well, this is not, uh, this is an assumption. I, for instance, never bought this image because I don't believe in the existence of hell on earth. And I don't think the Korea is hell on earth. I think it's a theocratic communist uh, country. Uh, very similar in, from what I can see to Albania uh, from before the breakup of communism. Because Albania was sometimes called North Korea of Europe because it was completely 100% isolated. And uh, it had a huge, huge problems with hunger, with uh, unemployment, and so on. And now we have we have so-called journalist who is showing us smiling children, uh, clean streets, and so forth. Well, I could I could show you, for instance, I could give you a few clips on YouTube of Beograd or Zagreb or Zenica, God forbid towns in, in the, from the 80s in Yugoslavia where you see pretty much war down buildings uh, gray <laughs> gray cloudy sky uh, people with expressions of terrible mood on their faces walking the streets yet Yugoslavia for instance was really not not a country that was it was not beyond the iron curtain and it was especially in the 80s when party was too much uh, concerned with itself to oppress the people it was a rather a rather a free country in the sense that you could uh, ha, you could you had uh, freedom of speech uh, freedom of speech was uh, outlawed in some, to some extent with something they called verbal delict by the law, but if they took you to court for something you said against the party government, you, uh, chances was that you will be freed. So if I, for instance, would go and show this uh, old Yugoslavia images, one could then conclude that Yugoslavia is not what you think. Yugoslavia is a terrible oppressive because everything is grey and people are in the bad mood. Not understanding that Eastern Europeans are generally always in the bad mood. This is cartoonish level of... of this is cartoon against cartoon. Because everybody with any sense will know that for instance, North Korea is a completely isolated country. The very fact that you can't take a piece without uh, security services guide uh, being somewhere very near you tells you what kind of regime this is. And in that kind of regime, people can be much morally much better than people in the far west. There is no doubt about it. But uh, those uh, anti-imperialist westerners are looking everything through Western eyes, through eyes of these supposed ideals of democracy and so on. And they try to see this in such kind of countries. Can you fathom uh, the extent of the escape from oneself that is displayed in this? This is complete and utter escape from oneself. Inability to accept one's own ancestry, one's own belonging, and one's own responsibility.
And this is masking as a responsibility or as a critique of one's own regime and so on. No, it is not a critique. It is a negation. It is a negation of free will. It is trying to uh, put forward the world in a Manichaean terms. With the bad God and evil God. And the small people are completely devoid of free will. For instance, the idea that war in Yugoslavia was a Western doing has a reason. And you know what the reason is? Reason is assumption that people of, of the countries that made up Yugoslav Federation, because that's essentially what Yugoslavia was. It was a federation of nation states, socialist nation states. That those people are incapable even to wage war against each other without being pushed into it by the West. Well, they are. <laughs> the way they, today, maybe, maybe today, they are not really. But at that time, they were perfectly capable. And the uh, causes were intrinsic. The efficient cause uh, of war was uh, Serbian. Uh, constitutional reform that got out of hand uh, once the, uh, once uh, Slobodan Milosevic was put uh, in the driver's seat but that's of course a story that has to be go that we would have to go into details but this was not a western provoke because west tried to I tried to play uh, a very complicated, uh, very complicated, play out very complicated policy towards Soviet Union with their man Gorbachev at the helm. An idea of secession of anybody in these uh, big, in this communist conglomerate of states was an anathema to Bush administration. But that's also something we should have gone into detail, and I won't go into details now. The point is that we, according to this anti-imperialist, have no free will. We are pets. We are fucking pets for them. Those are people who, who can't, uh, who, who are completely, uh, completely out of touch with reality. And what makes, fascinates me is that they are even able to travel the world and never touch the reality. And this is really, uh, this is really uh, damning for them. This is, this is, <clears throat> this is something that, that is flabbergasting, true, true to tell. <clears throat> and we, the rest, let's call us that, and everybody wants to be West and not the rest, rest assured about this. <laughs> We have a free will, and we have an angle, and we are looking things from another angle, and now you have this angle that you might call East European, uh, Mediterranean angle of somebody living in a small country that at one point in its history was completely left to, their, to its own devices in the face of overwhelming hostile force that was poised to not occupy, to destroy it. And I remember this very well. And believe me, in, this, in that situation, uh, you kind of know that you have no friends, for instance, that you have nobody to, that nobody will help, that people are completely left to their own devices. Uh, people who survive this, I know that they have free will, although they tend to forget it pretty quickly as a people, unfortunately. Uh, my point is that uh, this, uh, this anti-imperialism is perfectly aligned with imperialism, with what they fight against. Because it takes as a matter of course that American power is absolute, whereas American power is not absolute. That NATO power is absolute, whereas NATO power is not absolute. And the sign of this is that they are supporters, not of those small peoples because they love them, but because other empires could evolve from them, or other empires such as China or Russia 
are their supporters. Because they can think only in terms of empires, only in terms of conquests. And no matter what leftist uh, qualification they uh, claim for themselves, rest assured, they are imperialists themselves. They think in the terms of empires. And for this reason, uh, much of what you see, much, I think 90, more than 90% of what you see, what is called alternative media, as I'll always, always like to uh, repeat, is uh, not only worthless, it's dangerous. And it's evil, frankly. Stupid, evil, delusional, and worth, worthy of oblivion. And with this thought, uh, I will say goodbye till the next week. This was Branko Malic of Kali Tribune. Uh, hope you found this informative. And as I always say, support Kali Tribune. Make it professional.